This film covers a brief description of the 1963 Corvette independent rear suspension system with emphasis on the procedures for servicing rear wheel spindles and bearings. Let's first take a look at the major parts of this suspension system. Box section control arms are attached by rubber bushed pivot bolts to the frame side rails. Toe end of each rear wheel is adjusted separately using shims at these points. Camber of each rear wheel is adjusted separately by eccentric cams. These cams ride in a U-shaped channel to move the strut rods outboard or inboard as required. The rear of the fixed differential carrier is bolted to a removable cross member while the front section is bolted to another cross member. Large rubber mounts isolate the carrier at three points. The multi-leaf rear spring is also attached to the differential carrier. Full length liners made of a synthetic material separate the leaves. Spring link bolts cushioned by rubber biscuits extend through the main leaf and the control arms. Early production rear wheel spindles were designed to slip in and out of both the outer and inner bearings. However, this was changed later to a press fit by increasing the spindle diameter. Now let's remove and install the spindle and bearings. Raise the rear of the Corvette and support with jack stands at the frame side rails. Remove the four bolts attaching the axle drive shaft flange. Remove wheel and brake drum. Push or pull the control arm slightly outboard, which will permit the axle drive shaft flange to swing away from the spindle drive flange. Clamp a dial indicator to the brake backing plate. Forcibly move spindle in and out. End play should be one thousandth to eight thousandths. If not within these limits, record the reading for future reference. Remove dial indicator. Remove the nut, the thick washer, and the spindle drive flange. If the flange binds, use remover J8614 to pull it free. With the early slip fit design, pull the spindle out of the bearings by hand. Then tap out the outer seal and remove the bearing spacer and the selective shim along with the bearing. Tap out the dust shield and inner seal. Remove inner bearing. To remove the late press fit design spindle, reinstall the spindle nut to protect the threads. Then position the remover J8433 in a vertical position with the legs hooked to the rolled flange of the control arm. Turn the screw to force the spindle out of the inner bearing. Remove the special tool in the nut. The outer seal and bearing, the spacer and selective shim will remain on the spindle as it is removed. Tap out the dust shield, the inner seal and bearing. Clean and inspect all parts. Replace those that are damaged. If necessary, bearing cups can be removed with a brass drift. Use driver handle J8092 and bearing cup installer J7817 to tap new outer cup into position. Tap inner cup into position using the cup installer J7817 and a short piece of bar stock. If it is necessary to replace an early design slip fit spindle, install the late design press fit spindle 384378. To complete this conversion, the early spindle drive flange and its 140,000 thick washer must be replaced with the late drive flange 3839830, -830, which uses a new 210,000 thick washer. If the outer bearing, the outer seal, or spindle need replacement on the late press fit design, position press plates J8331 over the spindle as shown. Tighten the vise jaws to force the press plates together, wedging the bearing away from the spindle shoulder. With this added clearance, you can now get full support under the bearing with the press plates, and the spindle can be pressed off the rest of the way as shown. Pack both bearings with a lithium-based EP lubricant. Also coat the seal lips. Then position a new outer seal over the spindle with the tabs facing outboard, and press the outer bearing over the spindle using J9436 and a discarded spacer. When reinstalling the original spindle and bearing assemblies, it is necessary to select a new shim if the measured end play was more than eight thousandths. Measure the shim thickness with a micrometer. Just for example, let's say that the shim measures 133 thousandths. Now, from the shim thickness, subtract the original end play, which in this example is 17 thousandths, to arrive at a zero end play figure. Then select one of the available shims, which is the next thickest one to this 116 thousandths end play figure. The selection of the 118 thousandths shim will give a new end play reading of two thousandths when the unit is reassembled. Whenever new bearing assemblies are installed, regardless of the spindle design or when installing a new spindle, 
Use the 148,000 shim as a starting point when reassembling the unit. Now let's see how to install the early design spindle assembly. Place the outer bearing and seal in the spindle support with the tabs facing outboard. Tap the seal into position. Insert the spindle through the outer bearing and position the spacer and selected shim over the splined end. Then install the inner bearing, seal and dust shield. The seal tabs face towards the differential. Install the spindle drive flange, washer and nut. If the spindle flange and washer are the early design, torque nut to 50 foot-pounds. If they are the late design, torque nut to 100 foot-pounds. Install cotter pin. Now let's see how to install a press fit spindle. Position it in the support, then install only the spacer, the shim selected and the inner bearing. Slip an old spacer with 5 16 inch cut off either end over the spindle in place of the drive flange. The spacer must be cut off square. Install the washer and nut. Tighten the nut as far as possible to pull the spindle through the inner bearing, then remove the nut, washer, and old spacer. Install the inner seal, the dust shield, the spindle drive flange, the thick washer, and a new spindle nut. Then torque the nut to 100 foot-pounds plus any additional tightening needed to align the cotter pin hole. Recheck spindle end play. If not within limits, remove spindle, remove 148 thousandths of an inch shim, and select the correct shim by figuring the thickness needed from charts shown previously. When the unit is assembled with the proper end play, install cotter pin and seat the outer spindle seal into the spindle support using two screwdrivers. To complete the job, install brake drum, wheel and tire assembly, and connect axle drive shaft flange to spindle flange. Tighten bolts securely, lower car.